Hello there. On behalf of Bethel Lutheran Church in Bay City, Michigan, welcome to this time of worship and praise. This video is for the fourth and last week of end time called Christ the King Sunday. Today we rejoice for our salvation through Christ our King, the, the fulfillment of God's plan. And we rejoice because Christ, who is our King, he, he reigns and rules. The King who, who once came as a sacrifice the, the king who still shepherds us day by day. The, the king who will one day have and share with us final victory over all our spiritual enemies. We rejoice in his reign and we look forward to that day when every knee will bow and every tongue confess before the king of kings and lord of lords. If you'd like to follow along with today's prayers and, and readings and hymns, please follow the link in the video description. Dear friends, let's begin. We are living in the presence of the true and living God who is ever willing to forgive. Let us come to him in repentance and faith and be assured that he receives us in mercy. Holy God, our maker and judge, we confess that we are sinful. Every day we turn away from your will. We do not love you and each other as we should. We have disobeyed you and deserve to be punished. But we are truly sorry for our sins. And trusting in Jesus, we pray, have mercy on us and forgive us. God, our merciful Father, sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to die for your sins. You are forgiven. Now may God strengthen you to love him and live according to his will. Amen. In the peace that only forgiveness can bring, let's worship the Lord. We use the hymn, The Head That Once Was Crowned. Since the time of King David, Israel had called her kings shepherds. The men who followed in David's line, however, did not always shepherd Israel in the paths of God. So God makes a promise to his people 
The, the sovereign Lord himself would eventually shepherd his people. And we rejoice because we have a king who acts on behalf of his people like a shepherd for sheep. God, God says, I'm going to guide them. I'm going to guard them. I'm going to seek them. And I will find them. Most importantly, God promised to, to raise up King David's greater son to, to be the, the prince of his people and to be their God and to be their good shepherd. We rejoice in Christ the King who shepherds his flock to this very day. We read Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 11 through 16, and verses 23 and 24. For this is what the Lord God says. Here I am. I myself will seek the welfare of my flock and carefully search for them. As a shepherd searches for his flock when his sheep that were with him have been scattered, so I will search for my flock and rescue them from all the places they were scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and bring them to their own soil. I will shepherd them on the mountains of Israel, in the valleys, and in all the settlements of the land. I will lead them into good pasture and their grazing land will be on the high mountains of Israel. There they will lie down in good grazing land, and they will pasture on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will shepherd my flock. I myself will let them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost. I will bring back the strays. I'll bind up the injured. I will strengthen the weak. I will destroy the fat and the strong, and I will shepherd them with justice. Then I will raise up over them one shepherd, and he will tend them. My servant David will tend them, and he will be their shepherd. I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be the prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, by your victory, you have broken the power of the evil one. Fill our hearts with joy and peace as we look with hope to that day when every creature in heaven and earth will acclaim you King of kings and Lord of lords to your unending praise and glory. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sing the hymn, Hail, O Once Despised Jesus.
The next portion of God's weird word for our hearing today calls for, for some, some careful thought and some, some quiet meditation. Today we, we hear from the Gospel of Matthew. We, we hear chapter 27, verses 27 through 31. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. They, they twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. Put a staff in his right hand, knelt in front of him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spit on him, took the staff and hit him repeatedly on his head. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. And they led him away to crucify him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Dear friends in Christ, you and I don't really have the slightest idea of what it means to, to be subjects of an earthly king. Unless there's someone out there watching this morning who maybe has some roots in the, the United Kingdom or some other nation that, that has a reigning monarch, that the idea of having a king and living under a king sometimes is kind of the stuff of fairy tales. We, we know about a president, a, a governor, a mayor. Uh, we know all those things from first-hand experience, but, but not a king. The closest we have in our lifetime is maybe watching things about other countries and, and their kings or queens in TV or, or maybe reading about them in, in magazines. Maybe we, we saw something about some sort of royal wedding. Or maybe if we, we have a, a really long memory, just, just maybe we, we might remember watching the coronation of Queen Elizabeth on that newfangled invention called the television. But today, as we, we celebrate the, the way that God describes our Savior Jesus, that, that he is king, we, we know a whole lot more about this king than we think. Now, normally, a, a king rules with, with power and, and with majesty. But, but a look at Jesus quickly tells us that his rule is one that, at first glance, demonstrates weakness and meekness. As we heard in the, those words from, from Matthew, it's kind of hard to think of a, a king who would leave a, a forever impression on the world. But our king is... Not the stuff that fairy tales and legends like King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table are made of. Christ, our King, is the one who conquered death and who rules in the hearts of believers forever. As we, again, think of Jesus as our King today, we maybe would help to remember a hymn that pictures Jesus as that King that he really is. The first verse kind of goes like this. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let, let angels prostrate, prostrate fall. Bring, bring forth the, the royal diadem and, and crown him Lord of all. As we explore our, our king's suffering and, and death for us today, we, we learn that, that those outside of the kingdom, unbelievers, they, they see Jesus' kingship as, as a joke. But, but for us as believers, we, we see Jesus' rule in glory now, and one day we'll see it with our eyes. Now, the words of this gospel lesson are familiar, but they're much more commonly heard on, on Good Friday. The, the night before had, had been a hard one for Jesus. He was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane in, in full view of his disciples. And then he spends those agonizing hours on, on trial before the high priest. It really was a trial in name only. The, the verdict itself had, had been reached days ago. They knew what they were going for. After being awake all night and being on the receiving end of, of all that abuse, he is led out early in the morning to, to the Roman governor, Pilate. And Pilate, in the end, wasn't really all that concerned with true justice. But since he, he couldn't find anything in Jesus that deserved the death penalty, he, he kind of waffled and wasted time as he kind of tried to find a way to release Jesus. But, well, a good enough reason for him never came. In a last futile effort to, to appease the crowd, he, he decided to, to let his soldiers kind of have their way with Jesus for a little while. And he thought, maybe if they see him kind of roughed up, they'll, they'll kind of have some compassion. They'll say, all right, we, we got our pound of flesh out of him. 
And none of the Romans understood the, the culture or the religion of the Jews. So Pilate had kind of oversimplified the charges to, to say that Jesus' crime was, was being a king or a so-called pretender to a throne. And so that gave these soldiers a theme for their abuse. And, then, and we were told that the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium, gathered the whole cohort of soldiers around him, stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head put a staff in his right hand, knelt in front of him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And after a while, the the whole thing turned even nastier. They they, they spit on him, they they take the staff, and they they strike him on the head again and again. It's pretty obvious from their actions that these soldiers, that that Pilate, that the Jewish leaders, they they kind of looked at Jesus' kingship as kind of a joke, or at the very least not something to be taken any sort of seriously. They, they looked for all the things that, that were signs of an earthly king. They, they looked for, for charisma, for, for power, for, for a following. For something that would make them say, yeah, maybe there is something to this guy. And when they didn't find the things that they were looking for, they turned what little they did see against him and despised him as something that, that just they couldn't respect. They, they couldn't follow. And while all of this took place 2,000 years ago, I wonder how much has really changed. It's clear that not everyone follows Jesus today any more than they did back then. And I suspect that some of the reasoning is, is kind of the same. How, how can anyone who is so humble, who advocates such humility, really get ahead in the world? Isn't the world just going to chew you up and spit you out? And who says I should follow the lead of someone that that says if I follow them, I'm going to have to suffer for him? I'm looking for someone to follow who who can help me put put bread on my table, help me with things in this life, maybe maybe, uh, make sure that I'm ready for retirement, whatever it is that, that a person might be looking for, things that they see as their needs. To, to many, Jesus' kingship as a, is kind of a, a joke or at least something to, to not be taken seriously. But the, the real irony here is that these soldiers, as they say these words, hail Jesus, King of the Jews, they're, they're acting as unwitting prophets of the Almighty God. That The very thing that they're saying by their words, and they think is a joke, would by Jesus' words and actions become a reality one day. And on the last day, it will be true for all the world to see. Unlike other kings, our Savior is a king who conquers by allowing himself to be conquered. A casual observer on the day of Jesus' trial would would have seen a a man being humiliated and broken. But the reality is that Jesus was moving forward in his mission to conquer all our spiritual enemies, sin, death, the, the power of the devil, to install him as the king of grace and mercy forever. Jesus was indeed humbled, but it happened on his own terms, and it happened according to his own plan. Uh, years before, that, the prophet Isaiah had explained the reason for, for that humiliation. He, he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities, that the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds we're healed. Our sins were, were the reason that the Son of God went to the horrible cross. Why, why he humbled himself, why he allowed himself to have all these things happen to him. There on that cross, God makes the the greatest transformation ever heard of. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. God transforms us from lowly condemned criminals to, to children of the king, citizens of the kingdom. And to make sure that we would be clear about that, he also made a magnificent transformation of the son in his resurrection from the dead. Not only one day will we get to crown him Lord of all, but in fact, so will every last person who's ever lived on earth. There's nobody who will be able to deny that he really is the king anymore. If only Pontius Pilate could have understood the importance of his conversation with Jesus. As you read on in Matthew's gospel, they have this back and forth. And Pilate says, are you a king? 
And, and Jesus says, well, is that your own idea or, or did you talk to others about me? And then Pilate kind of goes, well, I'm not Jewish. I, I don't know about these things. It's, it's your people who handed you over. And then Jesus makes it clear, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my, my servants would, would fight to prevent my arrest. But now my kingdom is from another place. And, and Pilate kind of latches onto that. Oh, yeah, you are a king. And then Jesus makes it clear. You're, you're right in saying I'm a king. That's the reason I came into the world. I came to testify to the truth. The truth is that we're sinners and we're in desperate need of a savior. The truth is that Jesus has come to, to be that savior. We listen to him. We follow him. That means we belong to his kingdom. If Pilate had understood that, if he had accepted the, the words of Jesus, well, he might well be a part of Jesus' kingdom today and instead of forever having his name associated with, with Jesus' death. But Jesus came to these days, he came to these times willingly, and he submitted to injustice, he submitted to death, so that we would be citizens of that kingdom forever. And, and to this day, he, he rules as the Almighty King. He rules over his kingdom of grace by, by ruling in every believer's heart through the gospel. Here again, that the world around us doesn't really understand how Jesus' followers willingly follow his will without the, the fear of punishment. If he's the king, he's going to rule with this iron fist. You better do what he says. But maybe you've heard this story. It's an old story about a, a discussion that happened between the north wind and the sun. They, they're arguing over who was the strongest. So they decided to have a contest involving a, a man who's walking along the road. They said the first one to, to, to get the guy's coat off wins. So the, the wind goes first, blowing as fiercely and as cold as he knows how. But the, the harder he blows, the, the, the tighter the man wraps his coat around him. And then it's the sun's turn. The, the sun comes out, it shines in all its glory, and, and soon the man becomes warm and, and takes his coat off freely and willingly. That, that's a picture uh, of Jesus ruling his kingdom of grace with love. He warms us with his love, with his mercy, with his compassion. Ah. Jesus is ruling with power also. He rules with the same power that, that the Apostle Paul describes in Ephesians. God raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not, not only in the present age, but, but also in the one to come. In that position, Jesus does rule over all things, but he does so for the good of his believers. There's nothing that we need to fear about this life with Jesus in charge. But the, the most spectacular rule, though, the one that we're still waiting for, is to see Jesus ruling in his kingdom of glory. That, that's going to happen with Jesus' spectacular return on the last day, and it's going to continue into eternity. Then every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that he is Lord and Savior. Even those who have to admit it to, to their eternal condemnation. But for us, then, then we'll finally be part of that, that eternal kingdom of glory, living as happy and loyal subjects of the King. There we'll, we'll rejoice with all believers. And lots of things we don't know about it. Who we're going to see, what it's going to be like, what kind of things we're going to say and sing, but... But if we are, one of the verses of that hymn that I mentioned before, one that looks forward to the day of King's glory, it says later, Oh, that with yonder sacred throng, we, we at his feet may fall. We'll, we'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. And so our prayer is, come, King Jesus, come quickly. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which goes beyond all human understanding, guard and keep your heart and your, your mind through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Having heard the word of our God, we confess Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Dear friends, let's pray. God of glory, eternal King, Help us, we pray, to recognize the signs of the end times around us and to live each day with the realization that it could be the last day. Move us to hate what is evil and cling to what is good. Keep us zealous in your service, joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer, so that when the day comes, we will be among those looking up to see our Savior coming in the clouds. In his name we ask these things. And in him we also pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now with sins forgiven, assured of eternal life through Christ our King, receive his blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thanks you for, for spending time with us today. We, we pray that it gives you a measure of peace and and it equips you to, to be ready to, to serve and then one day to, to meet your king face to face. Check here again on Tuesday for our, our next piece of, of encouragement and, and learning from the book of Ecclesiastes. May the Lord bless your week. We close today with the hymn, Lord, when your glory I shall see.